Thank you very much. And uh, we are looking forward for more explanations at the end. The next speaker will go again in more detail about the tumor environment. And it's uh, Dr. Jay pra Prakash. Prakash? Yes. Um, and his talk will be about uh, tumor stroma as a barrier and target in cancer, novel models and targeting strategies. Thank, thank you. you very much. Uh, I would like to thank the organizers to give me the platform here to uh, present our some of the research. I will just hasten a little bit, so uh, try to just keep it, keep it up with me uh, because I have quite some things to show. And I hope uh, uh, that brings some interest. Mm -hmm. So I'm situated at or located at the University of Twente, and I'm also affiliated at uh, Karolinska Institute in Sweden. Um, so what we are doing at uh, this institute, so I started like three and a half years ago here, um, and it's a si simply just a different approach. So it's a problem-solving approach, not really developing a nanotherapy for developing nanotherapy, but it's developing something, really going from patient, finding the target, design the peptides. So it's a whole cycle from patient back to the patient, of course, we are not really too far, but I will just show you some pieces uh, of the complexes here and some theory system we are developing for stroma. Okay, so the tumor is not just composed of the tumor cells, as you have heard recently and yesterday also, and today also, that there's a lot much in the tumor, in the tumor microenvironment. There are fibroblasts, a lot of fibroblasts, um, endothelial cells, which are covered with the parasites, immune cells, and they communicate with each other, and they stimulate, finally, the tumor cell proliferation, metastasis, and also lead to the resistance to the tumor cells. Just look at the tumor stroma histologically, because I am affiliated to, you know, Carolines Institute in Oncology Pathology Department, and there, when I was there personally, I mean, now I'm not there, but what I learned is to simply go to the patient material, take the sample, look histologically, understand what is in the patient material, and there the, you know, the journey starts. So if you look at this uh, tumor stroma, this, all the brown staining is showing the tumor stroma. These are the tumor cells. As you can see, the proliferating cells with the multiple nuclei. Um, this is the tumor stroma. You have the vessels, which are mainly located at the stromal part. And some of the blood vessels are also close to the tumor cells. And, what, and this is enriched with the fibroblast and extracellular matrix. So what happens to our nanomedicine? We deliver anything which ends up to the blood vessels. They come out, whether here or in these spaces or here. They face first thing after the extravasation, the, uh, the stroma. And that's, uh, of course, the fibroblast and ECM. And the ECM is produced by the fibroblast. Sometimes you are lucky to have this angiogenesis, which is very close to the tumor cells, and you can get some effectiveness. Again, our in vivo models, subcutaneous models, are not representing uh, tumor stromal models. So that's why a lot of uh, therapies which are developed and tested in subcutaneous tumor models are uh, failed in clinics because this challenge is not being posed by these therapies. And of course, there is a interaction between tumor cells and uh, tumor stroma, that's called tumor stroma interaction. And that is, of course, leading to more problems than just simply the resistance. So this is like some uh, perspective I put for the fibroblast here in cancer. The fibroblasts are not only just as a barrier, they are also migrating. So here I put two type of fibroblasts, the good one and the bad ones. We don't know actually. Just it's the experience, my personal experience, and also experience from the people in the field, that there are more than one type of uh, fibroblast. They come from very different kind of cells. They may migrate to the, or they migrate actually, to the metastatic sites. And this is a recent like, Nature paper, which was published uh, uh, last year. And that shows that they activate and stimulate fibrosis in, uh, in liver and lungs. And that leads to uh, fibrosis, which generates metastatic niche. And what I propose here, several therapies, um, which can inhibit the fibroblast here at the primary tumor site and at the metastatic site. And finally, you can achieve some uh, inhibition of, the, uh, of uh, drug delivery, better drug delivery, and also inhibition of the pre-metastatic site, uh, pre-metastatic niche. Okay, so let's go further. So what I'm covering here is a little bit about barrier and about um, a, as a target. So first thing is the barrier. 
if you look at the tumors, pancreatic tumor, breast tumor, and prostate tumors uh, have uh, contain high stroma content, while the renal tumors and brain tumors, they contain low or very, very little. The brain has almost no stroma. Stroma, I mean the fibroblast. So this is one of the things which I studied here uh, with a PhD student, and we have the breast tumor, you know, uh, microarray. We looked at the alpha smooth muscle actin, which is the marker for the fibroblast, and the collagen, the extracellular matrix. And what you see is about like 40 and 50 percent of these uh, the stainings are positive. So stroma can, of course, vary from patient to patient, but it's abundant in breast cancer. We developed a, a tumor stroma, this in vitro model, which we have in our uh, um, institute. Um, Severin Lagak, she has the, the petri dish, which have the micro, micro wells about 200 micrometer in, in, the, uh, in the diameter and 400 micrometer in the depth. And we can just put the cells centrifuge and we get these spheroids. How do they look like? If you have the tumor cells, I just took like a simple saline, a 41 mouse breast tumor saline. And these are the green ones labeled here, and the blue ones are with fibroblast, the 3D3. And if you combine in different ratios, you can generate the stromal-rich, uh, uh, stromal rich, you know, um, mitral uh, tissues or spheroids, I would say. And you see that they are distributed, and within 48 hours, you have these spheroids ready. You can cut them through, um, and you can stain for like you know collagen and uh, uh, alpha smooth muscle actin. With the different ratios, you can see the, the percentage of stroma or alpha smooth muscle actin can go up, and also you can tune you know the collagen content. So this is like you know it provides you an opportunity for having the model which is mimicking now the stroma. So next thing what we did we just took the silicon nanoparticles, 30 and 100 nanometer size, and we incubated with. For, so different kind of uh, models. So only tumor cells, only fibroblast, and the mixtures. What you see here, that within this only tumor cell spheroids, the particles can penetrate through, they accumulate, and they go inside, covering about 80% of the, uh, the spheroid. And if you have the, uh, as soon as the stroma comes, the penetration gets very limited. And in fibroblast, it's hardly, you know, it's just one or two simple cell layers, because they just simply can't cross. And that's represented as the pen, uh, penetration area, but also the intensity of, so that gives the number of, let's say, particles penetrating through. And if we change the, so let's go back to the slide. These are the particles with minus 40 millivolt, uh, you know, very high negative surface charge. And if you reduce that by uh, partially emanated these uh, silica particles, you see the penetration goes down. So what happens in the previous, you know, uh, uh, slide, what I'm showing here, there is a lot of transcytosis, and that is the layer which is crossing to the uh, tumor cells, but as soon as the fibroblasts are there, transcytosis, transcytosis also goes away. And that's the reason here, when we have the lower zeta potential particles, this actually uh, gets even lesser. We also uh, studied PLG nanoparticles, which are about seven, um, minus seven millo millivolt, and the size is much bigger, 200 nanometer. And with the cone focal microscopy, so those were the sections. We cut through the sections. We looked for the particles. Here we did the uh, cone focal laser scanning microscopy for the same spheroid. And what you see with the time that the penetration in the only tumor cells, it goes high. But as soon as the stroma is there, the penetration gets very, very poor. OK, so this is uh, <clears throat> the first the conclusion. Like, it's a strong barrier. It is dependent on size, charge, and material. And uh, our 3D models, that provides some, you know, um, some first cues. But then we have to, of course, do structural studies, changing one each parameter, and then one can understand which parameter is affecting the penetration the most. All right, so I have, uh, uh, I see, like, the clock uh, ticking. Um, I go for the target part, and that's the pancreatic cancer, where the stroma becomes the most important. And that's the project, actually, two of the PhDs are doing. One PhD, uh, Jonas Schnitter, he got the, uh, yesterday the first poster prize. So I'm very happy for him. Um, all right, so here I start, like, you know, this pancreatic tumor, which is, you know, I mean, you heard a lot to, uh, in this conference also, which is the, the deadliest tumor, actually. And, okay, it's a, it comes into the rare category of the cancers, but it's the deadliest. And the reason is uh, the stroma. And there has been already, you know, like I said, almost 10 years ago, the stroma interaction with the tumor cells has been uh, proposed and has been, you know, very well studied. But then there was a study in 2009 in science which actually 
um, initiated a lot of clinical trials with hedgehog inhibitor, and they showed that if you combine the hedgehog inhibitor with the gemcitabine, you could have the higher efficacy. Many, many companies, they rushed, they brought it to the clinical trials, and what happened in the clinical, uh, clinical trials, it failed. Then another study from Raghu Kaluri's group and the other group, this first author guy, this Olive, he actually also published in the same issue another article where they showed depletion of stroma or fibrosis induces immunosuppression and that accelerates pancreatis, pancreas cancer. So completely other way. But after going through this you know, preclinical, then the clinical, and then they proved the this stroma has the opposite effect actually. It's a protective. Where is the problem? So what we started, we started with you know, mouse model. We had uh, uh, PANC1 tumor cells, and we combined with the stellate cells, which are the, uh, let's say, the precursors of the stroma in, um, in, in, in the pancreatic cancer. What we see that there's a, if you combine these uh, uh, PSC stellate cells, there's an enhancement of the tumor growth. And also, you can see within the tumor, if you cut, down, uh, cut these tumors, that there is a stroma. And these PSCs, they are not making tumors by themselves. They are just enhancing and supporting these uh, tumor cells to grow. So again, back to the same picture. Those studies were based on the depletion of stroma. And what I propose here, that we should modulate. We should not deplete. Because if you deplete the stroma, as you looked at the, you know, the first picture where I showed the stroma picture, 80 to 90% is a stroma. If you remove that stroma, the tumor cells get loose and they can just migrate. So the strategy is to modulate, not to deplete. So I picked microRNA uh, because, as you know, microRNA are very, very effective uh, therapeutics, but they are not specific. They con can control up to hundreds of genes at the same time, but they are the very good regulator for the whole cellular processes. Like in contrast of siRNA, they have multiple genes. But they are very difficult to control if you don't know, and you don't have the right target, they become complicated. Um, we have also published a review article and where we have looked for the microRNA in different cell types in this microenvironment. And this is a study which I started in collaboration with the Karolinska Institute and also Lynch Shopping and Cornell University. What we did actually, we had the uh, you know, patient material again back to the patients, uh, collecting the samples of the stroma uh, with a laser dissection microscopy and isolated the, uh, you know, the material, looked in, uh, we found some targets here, uh, 199A and 214, and these ones were highlighted in the patients. And here, I mean, we have published this in Onca Target uh, recently. Here we designed a strategy where we make, can make the nanocomplexes with these, uh, this uh, uh, dimeric uh, cell penetrating peptide and the antimicroRNA. We can make these complexes here is the different ratio of the complexes. Here it shows that they are stable if you do electrophoresis, while the free microRNA and one-to-one -one ratio, they migrate. They can actually, what we found, and that was sur surprising, that they could act only uh, transfect PSCs, but not the PANC1. The not the tumor cells, but the PSCs. We also looked more than uh, one uh, tumor cell line. As you see, the tumor cell lines are very, very little transfected compared to the uh, fibroblast or PSCs, which are very highly transfected. We looked also for the effects. So coming back to the 199A, which was one of the targets, as you see, if you activate the stellate cells with TGF beta, they get elongated, stretched, and highly uh, positive for alpha smooth muscle and collagen. And if you uh, use these complexes and put them in these cells, you can inactivate them. And non, uh, sort of, let's say control doesn't do anything. And that's also, at, uh, we can show at the gene expression level that it can be specifically inhibited. The blue bars are showing the inhibition at all the levels. And now with the interaction with the, you know, the tumor cells, so we made the spheroids uh, where we had this PANC1 tumor cells and the fibroblast, uh, the PSCs. The PSCs, they get activated and they also activate the tumor cells. And what you see in these spheroids, when you have just the control micro, uh, microRNA here, you see these proliferating tumor cells going out. They are big. When you have this uh, microRNA transfected, you have just the silent spheroids. The tumor cells are not growing. And then you can also get like, you know, uh, you can look at the size and that's statistically significantly here, inhibited. So we will be testing uh, the distribution and the effectivity in uh, our in vivo models where we combine these two uh, cell types. So it's my summary here. So the stroma is 
is a barrier, as I showed with the, you know, this micro um, uh, 3D spiroid tissue model. And also there's opportunity to develop, you know, new therapeutics or nanotherapeutics. And you can also, since as you look at this, up to 70 to 80% or 90% in, in case of pancreatic cancer, it's a big target. If the target is big, why not to hit that and use it for diagnostics? So this is my uh, last slide. I would like to acknowledge here uh, Pranith uh, Kuninthi. He did uh, a lot of biology work and found the 199A target. Jonas Schnitter, who is here in the audience, he is developing uh, you know, microRNA delivery system. And Dwi, she's working with the in vitro system. And of course, a lot of other PhD students and colleagues, uh, they are uh, also working in the fibrosis and tumor stroma area. And of course, my, uh, uh, I thank uh, Herr Storm, who is uh, really helping me. Uh, with all the activities and collaboration with, from Utrecht, Wim Henning, and many more collaborators from different parts of the world, and the funding agency here, and thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much for the interesting talk. I think, again, we have time for one question. I just wanted to ask you about uh, the um, entrance of the nanoparticles, which are more negative than uh, the less negative ones. Uh, it's counterintuitive, I guess, because usually if you have positive nanoparticles, silica mostly, they, they tend to enter easier. Um, any, any hint, any explanation for that? So, uh, my explanation is simply that the, the, the outer layer is made from, you know, the tumor cells. They are less fibroblasts because the fibroblasts come into the center, right? And uh, these silica particles, they're hard particles, non-pagulated. They can enter the tumor cells. And there was a study which was showing that they can even go through transcytosis yes. from one to another cells. And that's why we see the penetration. Mm -hmm. While when you put the fibroblast only, then this transcytosis process is not effective. And that's why they are inhibited. Yeah, um, um, my comment, short comment is, uh, would it be possible that is the environment of the tumor which is different than the normal one and uh, somehow release some positive proteins that make a corona around that and enter by that mechanism? It, it is possible. So we have been just wondering whether it's a collagen or something, but ECM is so complex to say anything. Obviously. And collagen, as collagen has the, um, let's say, the, the isoelectric point of uh, seven. Yeah. Uh, so a slight change in the charge will change its properties and interaction with the particles. So that's a, so, something we have been discussing and uh, studying. We will. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. The last talk will be given by me, and uh, it's about something completely different, but. Uh,